some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. In today's video, we find ourselves in a landlord-tenant dispute with a Moorish Savtard who demonstrates her utter lack of understanding of anything about the law or landlord-tenant disputes whatsoever. So let's go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Case number LT. Two three three five one one. This is HP Foreclosure Solutions LLC versus all occupants. Good afternoon, Judge Rania Haddad, P eight four ninety seven. I'm here for things. Okay. How do you spell your first name? R A N I A. Just like, just like I thought. Okay. And then, what's your name, ma'am? Uh, I'm the authorized representative for Tracy Moore, one of the occupants. Oh, that is freaking hilarious. She is a Moore whose last name is Moore. Okay. But uh, in addition, I've got a question for you. If you are the authorized representative of Miss Moore, do you happen to have a law license? Well, if not, then you're pretty much breaking the law as it is. Acting as a representative without a law license. Ooh, boy, you better bring in uh, the actual Miss Moore before you, the, uh, well, representative of Miss Moore, get yourself into so much doo doo. Tracy Moore occupied. Were you formerly known as Tracy Moore? Well, um. You can say it, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. And so uh, we're here today. This is a landlord tenant case. And so we were, it was filed by the HP foreclosure to terminate the tenancy. And it looks back on September 18th, we had a snafu. The plaintiff's counsel was present. And he went left to have another case at 3.10 p.m. He left to pick up his child and did not reappear by 4.07. The defendant appeared. And so the court called the plaintiff, which we don't have to do, but we tried to. And there was no answer. We left a message. So I had nothing to do with just missed the case because the plaintiff wasn't here. So we prepared the order and dismissed the case. So now, of course, the plaintiff has filed a motion to reinstate the case. Mr. Callahan in the motion says he had emergency something. And he didn't appear to a scheduling problem. He assumed that a new hearing date would be scheduled. Wow, we didn't know he had an emergency. We just know he just left. We didn't know what happened to him. But we did try to call. So it's not the court's fault. All right. So go ahead and make your argument. Uh, yes, Judge. Uh, that is correct. It was actually, I filed that motion to reinstate the case. Um, Attorney Callahan did have an emergency. And, uh, I, you know, he usually doesn't pick up his kid on, those, on that particular day. So which, but he had an emergency call from his wife. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was at downtown at the 36th District Court yeah. on the record. Um, I would say, had he said something? I understand, Your Honor. <laughs> he never said anything. I understand, Your Honor. Here we are trying to remedy that. Uh, um, so, you know, pursuant to the 2.6. Uh, Pursuant to 2.612 C1A, uh, we're, we're requesting the court to reinstate this case and for us to move forward with it as uh, as it would have uh, proceeded if it were uh, dismissed. In. Okay. Let's look at the rule that you just said. Oh, this is excellent. This is most excellent right here indeed. We have somebody who's doing their due diligence to, uh, well, actually look up anything that's told to them rather than uh, believing every single word that's spoon-fed to them. Uh, take notes, Savtards and uh, frauditors. 
or a fraud of their followers, this is what you got to do. You got to do your research because the laws are easy to look up. So why don't you be like this judge and actually look them up and interpret them properly instead of quote mining or anything like that? 2.612. What portion of that? Because it's for relief from judgment or order. And that says mistake, surprise, excusable neglect, just newly discovered evidence, fraud, void judgment, judgment satisfied, other reasons justifying relief. This would, in my opinion, are fault or excusable neglect. Um, Again, we, we're here to try to remedy uh, to remedy the situation. Uh, there was a family emergency. Uh, I tried to get to be able to log on to Zoom on time. However, I was unsuccessful. Jersey District Court, I don't know if you're probably familiar with. Well, I'm familiar. There's yeah, a lot going on down there. There's a lot going on. I was stuck on the record until got a little time to judge the case for them. So uh, we're just requesting. Um, I, I take full accountability. We are all just taking full accountability. We don't expect the court. To uh, you know, to go above and beyond, which, which we did. did. We did. Right. And we appreciate that. Uh, that should go without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. We do appreciate that, Your Honor. Um, so we are at the mercy of the court, and we are just asking for the for this case to be reinstated. Moments later. Okay, let's ask um, Miss, formerly known as Moore, um, occupant. Um, you've heard the motion. Would you like to respond? Uh, sure. Uh, I would like to ask automatically for a stay. Number one, uh, regarding my situation. Well, wait, 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 wait. We're not there. Oh, we, that's not before the court. You have to file a motion for that. Uh, perhaps you should seek some legal counsel. It might be beneficial for you at this time, considering that you just tried to, uh, do something without filing a motion? Oh, boy. Uh, yeah, you're pretty much screwed at this point, Miss Moore. More the more, or whatever. I mean, Miss Authorized Representative, Miss Moore, whatever. Oh, okay. Well, so whatever you're asking, typically, whenever you're asking the court to take some action on your case, you have to file a motion requesting the court take the action. And serve a copy of your motion on the other side. Okay. Once you do all of that, and you have to file a proof of service showing when you served it, which is just a document that says I served them with these documents, whatever the documents are, on such and such a date, and how you did it. Whether you did it personally, you gave it to them, or you sent it by mail by putting it in the first class mailbox. Okay. But you have to do that so we know they get notice, and you have to send them a notice of the hearing date for your motion which is what they did on this motion so right now we only have their motion before us oh got it i got it yeah that's what you're saying okay. yeah so their motion is to set aside the case was dismissed because i remember it very well because i remember he was here that's why i always make detailed notes and then i remember you were here when you when you got here because you weren't here exactly when he left but then you got here and so then by the time we called it which was maybe within the hour after he left he was gone and we didn't have an explanation that he had an emergency because i try to be reasonable with these things if you have an emergency i give you an adjournment if they have an emergency I typically would give them an adjournment, but because we didn't have a clue where he went, what happened to him, we tried to call him. He didn't answer. I was left with nothing but a hearing with only one side. And so since the plaintiff didn't come to that hearing or they left, I just they dismissed the case. So now they're seeking to reinstate the case, saying, well, here's the reason what happened. He had an emergency. Can you set it aside and just let us go back to where we were, which was like it was last time, which was a hearing date where we decide if we're going to set the case for trial or what? 
Otherwise, apparently, if I said no, they would have to refile the case. There's nothing stopping them from refiling the case. It would just start all over again. So that's really how it works procedurally, and that's what they're asking for. So my question to you is, did you um, want to respond? Responding to her motion. To, yeah, to reinstate it. Um, I guess we can, we can go to trial because I'm willing to fight for my place, but I will, you know, file a motion. Okay. But I'm going through, um, and I told her I put some more documents on the record today, and I wanted to uh, make sure that those were included also in the record and on the record. Um, I also wanted to uh, make sure that your own, your oath of office was on record because I wanted to uh, add the Constitution to help me. Yeah, I would suggest you get a lawyer ASAP because if you're going to represent yourself pro se, then you would lose automatically based upon what you're saying right here that you want the Constitution in this trial or something to that effect. Yeah, so my smooth brain soft tard, you're going to need a lot more than that to get you through this case because, well, you would need years of legal study, particularly in the uh, field of, well, landlord-tenant disputes, which... I don't think you'll find that in the Constitution. I'm sure you could look in a law library and find it, but certainly not in the Constitution. Regarding this, because okay. where I'm going... Well, to, apparently not. Are you a sovereign citizen? No, no, no. Because what does my own office have to do with well, anything in this says, case and the Constitution? Well, it says, I do solemnly swear. Mm -hmm. Well, you... You, you swore that you would support the Constitution of the United States. So, so if you don't have that, what is your point? Well, my point is... Because nobody that. has that. What? I, what do you mean? Yeah, nobody, differently litigants don't have judges' oaths of office and what? things of that nature. So what are you trying to say? You don't have my oath of office, what then? No, I, I have it. Okay. Yeah. So That's what I put on the record today. Okay. And so what is the point of putting her oath of office in the official record? Because she's not the one on trial here. It's your case that you got to be dealing with. You don't need to be arguing about the judge's credentials, you dumbass, because they're not relevant to this case. So I'm not sure what my oath has to do with the case. That's no, what I'm trying to understand. Because... Regarding my situation, um, it's fraud. Um, uh, Your Honor, we haven't even addressed the issue with the motion. Uh, and we haven't even, she's not even addressing the, this, the issue with the motion. Yeah, to, I didn't address the motion. To reinstate, re I think the motion is to reinstate the case to go to trial. Okay, sure. Okay. Sure. That way, we'll just grab the motion. How about that? We'll set aside the dismissal. You have an order? Did you prepare an order? Um, I believe do we not it was not attached to let's see. I'll move. Okay. Motion to reinstate a case. I might have to just adjust that order. I see an order. Should have, it should oh, wait a minute. Okay, here's one. Yeah, I would just have to cross off the number two, Your Honor, for our um, the relief being sought. What were we looking for? The judgment? Mm -hmm. I'm just telling that part because she's here. Thank you. So it just says case is reinstated. Thank you, Judge. And yeah, will this be just set for a, a hearing date and another hearing date? Okay, let's, yeah, that's what we can do. Um, she can do whatever she needs to do. It's a termination of tenancy.
You said you wish to do something you know, yourself too. So you yeah, actually, if I may, I'm sorry. I would just like to know for the record, since it was brought up by the uh, by the defendant, um, she, claiming that she uh, put something on the record. Um, I asked your the court your court clerk. She graciously made me copies of uh, documents that were in the file. I would just like to um, indicate that we were, were never served with anything that the the defendant or the occupant of uh, files of the court. And I would like to just um, request going forward that procedurally um, we would need to be served with any and all documents. Because I took a look at the court just file. just told her that. Yeah, I took a look at the court file and that was my first time seeing have all of those documents with, with uh, the exception of the documents that the court has sent to um, the hearing notices and so on and so forth in our own pleadings. Okay, so you understand that now that any time you file something with us, you have to do the proof of service and send a copy of whatever you file with us to the other side, the okay. people, the lawyers on the other side. Now she did just get a copy of what I put in today, and then I had um, told her about what uh, the previous one. Okay, well, well, that's good if you gave her a copy. She gave me, yeah, I uh, she gave me the pages that she gave me were, to be honest with you, Your Honor, I'll be on the oath of. Both of office and I don't know some type of alleged exemption from from paying and uh, this looks like a bunch of sovereign citizen documentation. Mm -hmm. Nothing has any legal validity here. Well, no shit. Well, gee, go figure on that. Uh, that a sovereign citizen, or in this case, a more sovereign citizen, would file paperwork that uh, is. Legally nonsense to begin with. I mean, yeah, go figure. I mean, they don't study the law at all, yet they think they know it all. So, yeah. Uh, good luck with this case, Miss Moore. You're definitely gonna need it if you go pro se. Because I have a sneaking suspicion that you are going to lose and be evicted. So we will be filing a J2 motion. Okay. All right. So let's set it for the hearing date. And if you can get your motions in before the hearing date, great. It's available November 13th at uh, 2 p.m. Uh, that's not going to give them a lot of time to file a motion. Okay. Actually, Your Honor. Katie? Yes, yeah. three weeks. Yes, two, yes. Three. We can file a motion within that time. Okay. So then November 13th, both sides, if you have a motion, you can file. And you'll have to call my assistant, which means you got to give them a hearing date before November 13th on their motion. Oh, before the 13th? Oh, no. Can we change the date then? I'm sorry. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No. That's what I'm saying. I didn't think you never Yes, time. no. I apologize. <laughs> Sorry, court's not available until November 27th. Okay. So, and then if they file a motion in between, you can get them in before yep. the 27th. Yes. What time? Uh, November 27th at 2 p.m. What day is November 27th? Monday? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. So you're all set for today, and here's the order of this one. So November 27th, you're going to try to fight this case with as little knowledge as you can possibly have. Well, good luck with that, uh, my more soft-tart imbecilic friend, because, well, you're going to need it. Because I have, like I said, I have a feeling that you are about to be evicted due to your own stupidity and ignorance of the law.
Dude, so there's no way I can get in, bro? Come on, I'll put you on my YouTube. But shut up, Wesley. You gotta put signs up, ma'am, if it's... Are you Glenn Serio? Who's that?